Hey folks, it's Perry again. I thought I would give you an update on the V10 truck engine project. Well, as you can see, the engine is sitting on a stand and it's not in the truck. And there is a very good reason for that. And that reason is sitting right there. Well, to give you a little bit of a story without it being too long, uh, this engine is a remanufactured engine. I found a placard on the side of it. It is also a junkyard engine, as evidenced by this paint pen there, and there's paint marker all over the engine like junkyards do. Well, there was, uh, there was some obvious signs of the engine not running quite right, and it was clear that the previous owner was not keen on maintaining his vehicles. Hence the reason why the tires blew out, or the tire blew out. Um, but on top of that, there was a tick on the left side. And I didn't know when I bought the motor that these do not have the cam phasers, which thankfully they don't. But there was a tick under the valve cover on the left side of the engine. Now, these engines have two intake valves, and then they have one exhaust valve. So they're arranged sort of like this, two, one, and... They have a rocker here, a rocker here, and a rocker here, and then one camshaft. Well, that tick, uh, whenever I pulled the valve cover off, I found this rocker laying in the bottom of, well, in the head. Uh, fortunately, the valve still had its keeper, and there didn't appear to be any other damage other than some scoring to the camshaft. Now... If some of you have watched uh, my channel, you may have been recommended J.C. Smith's Projects channel, and he had a V10 uh, that ate a camshaft, uh, you know, roller rocker, um, failed. But here's, let me see that. That shouldn't happen. So this rocker is is done for. So anyway, uh, I've got to replace all the rockers in this engine. Uh, if I go with the cheap rockers, it's like 155 bucks for 30 rockers. If I go with the Melling ones, which I'm sure are the Ford OEM ones, which based on this, I'm not so sure that they're really any better. But if I go with those, we're looking at over $300 in parts. And if I have to replace the camshaft, that's another 150 So I'm looking at anywhere from as cheap as 150 bucks to as much as 450 bucks just to fix this one issue. Now, um, you know, I, like many people, are not made of money, and I've already spent a lot of money on this project, well over a couple thousand dollars. Uh, so I think I'm going to kind of dial it back just a little bit right now, uh, wait until next month, until after the holiday season is over to spend more money on this. But um, it's one of those, you know, do you throw good money after bad, and so far, I mean, the engine ran, it didn't run real well, and I think I have a good indication as to why it didn't run real well. Now, these are the weird Triton 3-valve spark plugs. Uh, I believe these are generation, what I would call 1.5. They're still a two-piece plug, but it didn't break apart when I took it out, and three of them were pretty well seized in there, so I used the OTC tool to remove them. This is fairly typical of the plugs, I would say. Three of them came out looking just fine. Uh, a majority of them came out like this with the, the strap. Uh, let me. So this strap on the plug, if I can get it to focus, is eroded and the gap is huge. All of them had really huge gaps. And then uh, this was sort of like the 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 icing on the cake. That one has no strap. So, you know, that one basically had a, what, an eighth inch gap. And the majority of the plugs were like this. You know, they had a, a minimum of an 80,000 gap to as much as an eighth inch gap. Now, uh, I don't know about other vehicles, but I would say that was probably taxing these, you know, coil on plug ignition system a lot, and it wouldn't run very well. So I knew that once I had the cab off, I wanted to do plugs on it. 
I pulled the valve cover, saw that the valve, you know, that there was a rocker in there. Knew I needed to put the engine on the stand. So now the engine is on the stand and I've got the, I changed all the spark plugs. They're good. I got to order rockers and I got to order the tool or make a tool for compressing the valves. That brings us to the next project, which is this big pile of wiring on the floor. Um, what you see here, uh, well, that's just the loom, but what you see here is the taillight harness for the donor truck. That's a 2007 F450 gasoline engine. And what's in this taillight harness is mostly stuff to run the gasoline engine. So you got your uh, fuel pump, fuel level sensor. Uh, you've got your uh, canister purge valve. You've got your fuel pump control module. And you've got uh, your fifth oxygen sensor. This truck only had three oxygen sensors, but they're provisioned for up to five, uh, where they'd have uh, two sets of catalytic converters. This only had one cat converter with the integral oxygen sensor. So what my plan is, and I've already got a nice diagram drawn up, which I'll show you in my next video, is I'm going to take the relevant wires out of this connector here. There's three connectors. So this is one connector. <clears throat> this is the second connector. It looks just like it, except it's black instead of gray. And this is the third connector. And all three of these connectors have wires that we need. So I'm going to separate those wires out and I'm going to create an overlay harness using more looming like that. So I'll have a second harness that runs along the frame rail and it will run alongside the factory harness, which is this one. So this is, uh, that's the part that goes to the ABS module. And, wait, no, I take that back. This is a donor harness. This is, uh, so this is the old transmission harness. Uh, it has wires that we're going to need. These are from the gray, big D-shaped connector. We're going to need those. And this is your ABS module. This 8-pin connector right here connects to the ABS module and the CAN bus and stuff like that. And then this big D-shaped connector, that is your taillight harness. But there's only, you know, a half dozen cables in there. So I'm going to create an overlay harness that goes side by side with this one that powers everything else. And as you can see, there's a huge mess of wires here. I promise you, it's going to get done. It's not super complicated. And I've got a really nice wiring diagram that I drew up that I think anybody could follow. And I will share that with you in the next video. But I thought I would give you just an update on the project right now. I know I haven't had any videos on it lately because two reasons. Uh... The setback, I knew whenever I was going to pull that valve cover off that I was going to find problems, and I was sort of dreading dealing with that. So now it's out of the truck sitting on an engine stand. It's waiting for parts. The other reason is my 2002 F350 Super Duty. That was sitting in the garage for three months because the radiator that the body shop put in when it was repaired in 2017 failed. That radiator had an integral transmission cooler and coolant got into the transmission oil, which then contaminated the clutches and it wiped out the torque converters, uh, clutches. So there's a five, it's a five disc torque converter and it no longer had lockup. It was one of these problems that happened over a somewhat longer period of time, so it wasn't, you know, sudden. But uh, I replaced the radiator, 
<clears throat> flushed the transmission fluid and that didn't fix it. So then I had to pull the transmission out and uh, that transmission was rebuilt by ATS Diesel, who I originally purchased the transmission from. Uh, I will say they did me a huge, huge favor. Uh, I bought the transmission five years ago and they have a five year, 500,000 mile warranty. Uh, the transmission was out of warranty by a few months and it only had like 20,000 miles on it, 18,000 miles. They rebuilt the transmission at no cost to me. It did take about six weeks because, you know, they had other projects going through, but they rebuilt it free of charge. I just had to pay shipping. And I also upgraded the input shaft because they said, hey, you've got an upgraded turbocharger. We recommend you put the billet input shaft in there, which makes it <clears throat> a stage two transmission. So now I've got a stage two ATS diesel transmission with the five, you know, five plate torque converter. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if you are one guy in a garage, it is extremely difficult to put a transmission in a truck like that by yourself. Uh, yeah, I ended up, what, what did work is I used a pallet jack to get it up off the floor and then I used an ATV jack, uh, to, lift it up into place. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was a real difficult job. It took me a couple days to get the training all buttoned up in there, but you know, I got everything dialed in nice and I found out that the previous shop that had done the training swap didn't bother to Loctite anything. So you're supposed to use red Loctite on the torque converter bolts. There was no Loctite. There was no Loctite on the drive line, uh, flange bolts to the tor uh, transfer case. So, uh, I'm glad that I did it, but anyway, it's done. The truck's running. Uh, it'll never have that problem again because I bypassed the, uh, cooler that's in the radiator. Cause I have the external, uh, six liter cooler. It's a 26 row, uh, no problems. It won't have any problem. So anyway, uh, sorry, this is going on too long, but I wanted to give you an update. There's the V10. Uh, I've got more details about differences between 07 and 08, but I'll save that for another video. That's the situation on that. Thanks for watching.